Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part five for today, Friday. Yeah, five for Friday, I guess. October 12th, 2012. I'm Darko. My website's ggnonline.com and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So let's just continue because I still have plenty of articles to get to. And um, if I don't get to all of them in this video, well then that's it for today and this weekend. Uh, get a so we just left off with, uh, with the parents getting separated, basically divorce and stuff like that, and uh, killing the family engineering society. Then we left off with this article as well. Genetically modified three-parent teenagers. It says, while here in the U.S. we bicker about whether single-parent households can raise children as well as two parents, that was done by design of two, right? To get, uh, to get to, uh, one of the family members out of the home, uh, working while the child has to go to a uh, daycare center, right? State-funded daycare center to brainwash them. But it goes on and says, as two parents, one in Britain, they're way ahead of us. They're up to three parents in the mix. Bless their souls. They don't mean three parents under the same roof. That would be chaos. But it goes on here, says they mean a kid made from a genetic goop of three people. Go on and say, it's a serious topic with a serious goal of allowing parents who carry genetic defects, remember the genetically uh, inferior, sorry, to produce children who are free of those defects. So a British committee, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority, is now mulling whether to lift the ban on genetic modification. They say that uh, it could have a new family dynamic problem that would be created when the child becomes a teenager and they try to play mom and dad off each other. And it says here that... Um, like an example, the mom, dad, and the donor dad all contributed genes, uh, conferring them to certain authority, right? The British are carefully examining the ethics of the process that would produce disease-free uh, three-parent babies. And it says ethics? That's the easy part. How to get through the teen years, that's another uh, committee entirely. So they make a big, big joke out of it, right? So moving on next. We have locking up killers and rapists for life without prospect of releases. Not appropriate, says the Court of Appeals. They say even though some who have committed horrendous crimes should be given a hope of possible release in the future, it was argued, locking up killers and rapists and throwing away the key with no hope of release was too harsh a penalty, says the court. So then I saw this article today, and of course when you read in the comments and stuff like that, people are really quick to criticize other people as far as how they raise their families and their children. Mom gets 99 years for gluing Tot's hands. Uh, says that she's sentenced for beating her toddler. So no matter how um, despicable her actions may have been, I just find it kind of ironic how bankers who steal billions of dollars of wealth and siphon it off into a black hole uh, can get away with what they get away with, with uh, people like Bush and uh, all those usual suspects um, that brought uh, the U.S. and the West into the Iraq war based off um, you know false allegations, false el evidence. They, they basically lied. And they're not going to be held for any of their actions. Um, just talking about this article here, these people, what? Uh, they can kill and rape and, uh, you know, they're not going to get killed, right? Uh, no, they're not even going to throw them in life in jail. They want to reduce their sentences. So they promote certain things. And then things like this, oh, now the state all of a sudden is going to act like they are, the, um, you know, they're the purveyors of morality and they know what's best, right? So God forbid if an individual cit citizen um, uh, messes up, right? So then that's actually when the system comes down hard on you. Like, you know, if you try to get a, uh, start up your own business and maybe avoid certain things, well, then you're un-American and unpatriotic uh, uh, bastard, right? And you deserve a SWAT team and get a bullet to the head because you want to try to cut a few corners to create some, uh, some work for yourself and your family. Rhode Island begins first state to mandate flu shots for healthcare workers from October 5th. Rhode Island today became the first state in the nation to mandate seasonal flu shots for all healthcare workers. So they can't opt out of it and sign a waiver, but they say those who are not immunized will have to wear a surgical mask for each patient contact during a period when flu is widespread, declared by the health director. So that's real nice, right? Then um, next up, hospital employees' jobs in jeopardy if they don't get a flu shot. So hospital employees across Colorado are being threatened with their jobs if they don't get a flu shot by the end of the year. The requirement is being implemented now, even though the Colorado state of Colorado requires more than half of all employees to receive vaccination. One in hospital employee said, I don't want to get the flu shot, and to me it seems I'm getting forced to put a virus in my body that I object to. Well, they're right. It says mass flu vaccination drill also is practiced for emergency from October 2nd. It goes on and it says that 
uh, the staff here at the medical center had vaccinated 63% of their coworkers against the flu in less than 30 hours. Universal flu vaccines for employees are a priority at the hospital, and they want to make sure employees don't spread the flu. It says hospital staff raced against themselves from 6 a.m. Monday to midnight on Tuesday, tracking how many employees they could vaccinate in a 42-hour period. 13,000 people have been exposed to big pharma shots contaminated with rare fungal meningitis. So October 9th, as of Monday, contaminated steroids have sickened 105 people with a non-contagious but deadly form of fungal meningitis. While 13,000 people may have been exposed to the contamination, eight have died. They attribute the outbreak to spinal steroid injections for back pain. And uh, the whole thing is they'd like to say, oh, the FDA, it wasn't regulated, right? Well, you know what? If you pay them enough money, you'll get what you need to get passed, right? And then later, they just, the amount of money and profits that these companies make far outweighs the risk of having to, to do a payout. So they just go ahead and do it. They just have to give little bribes to uh, people in Washington. Uh, required meningitis vaccination. So Texas law requires most incoming college students to be vaccinated against the bacterial meningitis. So, yeah, so it goes in there. You are required to provide full proof of vaccination. I remember that. After I just got done getting stuck with a bunch of needles for five years in the Marine Corps and got out in 04. Then from 04 to 08, they wanted more vaccination. So if I would have known now what I knew then, I would have just told them, F you, I'm not going to go to school here then, right? FDA approves combo vaccine for deadly bacterial meningitis in children. So see, they, they, they approve this combo vaccine. This is after reviewing how effective the vaccine was in hundreds of infants and toddlers. So nice little lab rat guinea pigs, right? But the irony, of course, is what? Is that these bastards, these eugenicists, these uh, um, uh, drug peddlers, they themselves don't actually take the vaccines, nor do they give them to their children, protecting their own, the unofficial vaccination policy of doctors in the know. So one doctor on Gardasil said, uh, Gardasil, what the hell is that? That shouldn't be on the market for another 30 years. He says, we have no idea if we're causing this disease to mutate and become more harmful and stronger than it is now. No idea. So it goes on and it says that he talked about it with his partners, it says you have to give it to your patients. I told him, I'm not telling my parents or patients that they have to give this to their nine-year-old. I get looks like he's crazy, right? They said they thought I was nuts. My partners are saying to me, you got to give it to them. Doctors on vaccines in general say, I don't vaccinate my kids. I rely on herd immunity, which is selfish. I know herd immunity basically means I'm relying on the fact that everyone else is vaccinated. I know it's wrong. They said they, his children are fine. I might vaccinate when it comes time for them to go to high school because I don't want them to have to miss out on travel opportunities. They are all perfectly healthy. We've been, the basic uh, uh, theme here is, is calling the population, right? The elites, because we're, we're a threat to them in numbers. And we have what? Cancer deaths will fall by 17% by 2030 as treatment improves, right? Death rates were set to drop from 170 to 142 per 100,000. So sounds really great and everything, right? Well, you know it's not going to happen because they, they want the numbers to go down. So I saw this article, and um, I've covered this before, cancer care costs to more than double in some U.S. states by 2020. So it's going to get expensive, right? So, you know, I don't believe this. It may fall for the elites, but... Um, we have biotech scientists says it's awesome that GMOs cause infertility and death. So this is from Natural News, and it says in one such communication, this individual received a very angry biotech scientist who claimed it was awesome that GMOs were causing mass infertility and death. It becomes tragically clear that even many scientists working in the biotech field know full well that genetically modified organisms are causing significant bouts of disease across the globe. If you go in there, the links will be posted. You can check out the email that was written by this biotech scientist known as Ed and explains how he thinks it's absolutely awesome as he believes the world is overpopulated. He also attacks this other individual for uh, personally for his work on warning the public over the dangers of GMO. In particular, his research that linked organ failure and tumor development with GMOs. Then in this one, we have EU sides with Monsanto and GMO cancer corn word war. So uh, Russia just recently pulled out and says the European Food Safety Authorities rejected a controversial French study linking GM corn to cancer. Many in Europe are already calling for stricter controls on GMOs as farmers weigh the lucrative crops against health concerns. Kellogg recalls cereal over metal fragments. The bite-sized mini-wheats might be too crunchy. It goes on, it says, the possible presence of fragments of flexible metal mesh from a faulty manufacturing part. 
It follows a bigger recall of several cereals in 2010 because of a weird smell and both glitches point to lingering problems in the company's supply chain. Asian seafood is raised on pig feces has been approved for U.S. consumers. That's right, so I hope you're not eating. But it goes on and says that um, Chen feeds fish partly with feces from hundreds of pigs and geese. The practice is dangerous for American consumers, says the director of University of Georgia Center for Food but Safety. Yeah, in Japan, they have meat made out of uh, crap. And then also in China, you, they found that they had uh, uh, garbage-fed beef, uh, cattle, uh, foraging and feeding in, in their in their uh, landfills. So, And again, like the Communist Party, they have their own separate organic fields of produce and that. Uh, then food sickens millions as a company pays to have, uh, basically, the inspector say that it's safe. So this is just typical, right? You shouldn't be surprised by this. And then U.S. researchers are mapping carbon emissions at a street level. This is kind of spooky when I saw this. Uh, U.S. scientists developed new software that can actually or accurately measure greenhouse gas emissions down to individual buildings and streets. They say it could aid international efforts to verify reductions in carbon. And those people that might be all for that might be for this job. If you're looking for a job, Queen advertises for a new Buckingham Palace gardener on wages of less than 300 pounds a week. New gardener needed to work organically in team of eco-friendly staff. So you're going to actually produce organic food for her, of course, right? And that means you've got to take more time to do it. So for 14, almost 15,000 pounds a year, the gardener must be in at 7.30 a.m. And it says here a successful candidate must have an interest in conservation. So that's not very much when you consider how much money they have to have and the amount of work that you're going to be doing as far as the big-ass uh, uh, property. And George Osborne's CO2 tax will double UK electricity bills. There's a nasty shock in store for British householders when a new carbon tax comes into force. Of course, I think they're getting an increase of 6% in gas bills too. The it says that the new UK tax comes into force next April. And just like everything else with the propaganda uh, building around the recession of 2008, uh, you have what? They want to teach people, young people, uh, that this is the norm. This is just the way it is. It was just organic. It just happened to be un uh, underemployed, like a nice little show. The underpaid, underappreciated, in over their heads, right? Generation. Generation where you can't find a job. The new jobs report shows growth, but in low-skill part-time jobs. So if you can't find one, it's in low-skill part-time October 6th. Then American undergraduates recruited for a population control agenda as UN raises the stakes. Neo-eugenicist John Seeger to undergraduates says, you're the ones who are going to be able to move this forward and uh, complete what I see as one of the great social movements of our time. The United Nations Population Fund keeps up pressure in an effort that's underway to flood universities and colleges throughout the U.S. with population, population control propaganda. And forget class warfare, it's about age warfare we should we be uh, worrying about. This employment to population ratios among older individuals have gone up in recent years. In contrast to the so-called prime age of 25 to 54, where, un where employment to population is much lower than earlier. It says that the uh, older ones, 65 plus, are forced to stay in the workplace as retirement remains a dream. That's why you have how the Fed doomed elderly Americans to endlessly work. So they give them three choices. It says here, save more, work longer, or tighten your belts in retirement. And here's the percentage point change of 25 to 54-year-olds after 2008 of employment. Daily tickers saying food is the new oil and that food unrest will become a term that is part of our daily vocabulary. Of course, of course, the founder of this Earth Policy Institute it calls his book Full Planet Empty Plates, the new geopolitics of food scarcity, kind of like fertility, right? You don't get, uh, you don't get the goods from the World Bank. Could roast dinners become a thing of the past? Thousands of families can no longer afford to cook, to cook traditional meat meals on Sunday. Then Americans may be getting poor, but at least we're getting fatter and sicker thanks to GMO. Fast food children develop lower IQs as a junk diet. U.S. income gap between the rich and the poor hits a new record high. Switzerland study shows 147 technocratic super entities rule the world. Check that out. So, wealthy travelers are receiving preferential treatment by the TSA to travel. That's why it's a brave new world. you got to keep up. Fakers use wheelchairs to dodge airport lines. Hmm. Trying to be like the elites. Are humans the extraterrestrials? Sci scientists are backing the theory that life was brought to Earth and exp 
an elite's plan for moving humans off Earth. So they want to get us out of here. And then what? Floating Bilderberg cities where the elite control the masses, much like what? The floating cities in the show Serenity. Thank you.